<laughs> so there's an old saying um, that in most organizations, most leaders are good managers, but most managers are not good leaders. And the primary reason for that is this tension between task and relationship. And we tend to go to work to do a task and not so much to relate to people. So the challenge for the manager to become a good leader is to be a better uh, relator to other human beings, as opposed to just seeing work as a place to go and get a job done. And, and that's challenging because um, relating to others effectively means I have to know myself a little bit more intimately. And so during the self-management course, we, we, we try and do something which we don't find on too many other leadership courses, which is to build the things that we're not taught uh, as young people, uh, either at school or our parents or in any formal context. And, and this is what's called self-awareness and self-understanding. So a, 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 a significant part of the self-managing leadership a workshop is really helping participants to be a little bit more self-aware, to understand themselves a little bit better so that they can manage and lead themselves better. And that's really the foundation to, to connect with others, to relate more effectively with others. And, and I find that when participants uh, notice the improvement in this area, they get a much greater and deeper taste for leadership. And, and that's when the, the capacity to lead others becomes more real from inside out. Because really it's, <laughs> it's not a set of skills, it's not a set of abilities. It's an intuitive, adaptive, attitudinal process this idea of being a better leader for human beings, for the team, for other people. But everyone's different, and so everyone enjoys it and engages and participates in a different way at a different level, and that's just fine. The main thing is we do have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that we look at during the, the course um, um, quite intensely really is, is leadership style and, 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 and how can you develop your own leadership style. And once again, you can't just grab this out of a textbook or, or it's not a formula, it's not a technique. It's about what's your natural way of working with others. What's the easiest way for you to do that? For example, you know, to begin with, many leaders, they, they, um, they naturally want to lead from the front. They want to be kind of out there and, and bringing people with them. And that's fine. That's OK. But then other people's inclination is to lead from the back, from the rear, and to put people ahead of them and, and, and empower others and encourage others a little bit more. And, and of course, that's also fine. That, that's just a particular inclination and style. And, and, and then there's people who like to get right in the middle of it. And they, they don't want to be in front, they don't want to be in the back, but they want to get their hands dirty, work with the team, work with the people, and really feel involved in a part of, of what's going on. And, and that's also fine. There's no one right way, one right style, if you like. But I think for me, um, what I enjoy doing most is, is when I'm working with people to be more effective, is to help them, I guess, you, what you could call become more fully rounded. In other words, have the ability to know when to lead from the front, when to, to step back and put others forward, and when to get your hands dirty and, and muck in with the team. Because there are the right moments for these kinds of approaches when you are being the leader for others. Remembering, of course, that ultimately leadership is not a position. You know, again, there's, there's an old saying, manager is position, but leader is an attitude. And it's the quality of my attitude that's going to shape the effectiveness in whatever style I choose to, to adopt whether it's from the front, from the rear, or in amongst my people. So it's very interesting when we really look deeply at how to cultivate this thing called leadership style. So yeah, during the, the course itself, the workshop itself, we, will, um, we won't just look at style, but we'll also look at this thing of power. And um, today, what we tend to do, what we tend to find in most organizations, is that um, leaders are not using their power. 
And you can tell um, when you notice they're forcing things. So what we will focus on during the workshop a little bit is, is how to make the shift from force to power. And, and you can tell when you're forcing things because the moment you, uh, as a leader, will resist someone, then the behavior that comes from your resistance in a relationship will be forceful behavior. And of course, the big manager's mistake in this context is they try to control their people. For 200 years, you know, management training, management learning was control, coordinate, organize your people. And of course, this is the, the aspect of force. But to make the shift from force to power begins with an understanding of the, the three kinds of power in relationships. And, and the, the first, of course, is, is, um, is positional power in the context of an organization. And positional power has a validity when things need to get done, when the manager does need to manage things. But then there's something called relational power. And relational power is like an, an energy that's built over time in a relationship. And it's not about telling people or controlling people or, or even showing people. It's about building a relationship um, based on trust, based on respect, so that you know when eventually things need to be done, then people will respond according to the previous investment of those kinds of energies in the relationship. So this is relational power. And then, of course, there's the core energy of the individual. And this is something called personal power. And in many ways, it's very difficult to develop your leadership capability until you discover how to bring to the surface your own personal power. And, uh, and, and uh, the, the times that you know you're not in your power are those times when you're blaming or you're criticizing or you're getting stressed out in the context of what you're doing. Because those are signs that I'm giving my personal power away. So the first real insight, lesson, realization that I find that I have to help the manager have in order to make the transition to leader is how not to lose their personal power, how to stand in their power and, and free themselves from the habits of blaming and criticizing and complaining and allowing others to affect their attitude, their mood, if you like. So during the self-managing leadership course, we'll look at how to do that, how to, to get from, from losing my power to taking my power back. So I can then bring to my relationships a, a, a good balance between positional and relational power in our interactions.